Hey everyone, this is Owen with Motion Array, and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create this complex geometric gemstone type thing. I don't really know what to call it, but it looks pretty cool and it's happening all with just a handful of keyframes. If you look carefully, you can see that the lines are connected, so as the shape moves, the lines that connect them move as well. Alright, let's get started. I'll begin by making a new composition, and I'll make this HDTV 1080-2997, and I'll call it Path Animation. Then I'll hit OK. Next I'll create a new solid by going to Layer, New, Solid, and I'll make sure it's comp sized, and I'll call this Background, then I'll hit OK. Then I'll go up to Effect, Generate, Gradient Ramp, and this is what I'm going to use to color the background. So I'll do a light blue for the upper color, and a darker blue for the bottom. Then I'll go up to Layer, New, Shape Layer, and then I'll add a Polystar to that shape layer. Under the Polystar options, I'll change the type from star to polygon, the points to 12, and the outer radius to 400. I'll also add a stroke, and I'll make the width of that stroke 5 pixels. Then I'll rename the layer to Poly1. Now I'll duplicate this layer, and I'll change some of the settings. So under my Polystar options, I'll change the points to 8, and the outer radius to 300. And then I'll just duplicate this one. So what I have now is three shape layers. Two of them are identical, and then the first one is the larger one with more sides. So I'm going to twirl them down and go to their Polystar paths, right click and go to Convert to Bezier Path. I'm going to do that for all three of them. Now when I do this, it's turning it into just a regular path, so I lose all those options about changing points and outer radius, so you want to make sure that these are exactly how you want them before you do this. Now that I've converted all of my paths, I'm going to twirl them down one more time to get exactly to that path. And then I'll highlight all of these paths, and I'll use the Create Nulls from Paths window. If you don't have that up, go to Window, Create Nulls from Paths. And I'll use the Points Follow Nulls button. So what it's done is it's made nulls for every point on the shapes. And so now if I move these nulls, you'll see that the points of the shapes follow them. You'll also notice that the layer names of them correspond with the point and the shape layer that they're attached to. So to help me visually, I'm going to color code all of the points for each shape layer. So for poly3, I'll make these blue, and then I can leave poly2 as is, and I'll change poly1 to red or something like that. Now I'll go up to Layer, New, Null Object, and I'm going to call this Control1. Then I'll duplicate it so that I have two null objects. One's Control1 and one is Control2. And I'm going to parent all of the poly1 points to Control1 and all of the poly2 points to Control2. Now this is where things can get a little bit confusing. I'm going to parent the first point of poly3, this one up here, to the point on poly1 up here so that whenever this one moves, this one will follow. And I also want it to be exactly where that one is. So if I click and drag the parent pick whip all the way to that first point and hold shift before I let go, it parents it, but it also moves it exactly to the same position. So now if I move that first point, it's moving both of them. Now I'm going to repeat that process for this point, this point, and this point for poly3. So now I'm going to repeat that process with the right, bottom, and left points of poly3. And to help me see all my layers a little bit better, I can hit the tilde key with my mouse over the timeline, and it makes it full screen. So 
So there you go, those are all parented now. It takes a little bit of guess and check, but I've done this a few times, so I kind of knew which ones go to which. So if you get them wrong the first time, it'll be obvious, and then you can just fix them. The next step is parenting the remaining poly three points that don't have parents to their poly two counterparts. So for instance, this poly three one one will need to go to the poly two one one. And I'll do that for all the remaining points that don't have parents. So now all that's left to do is to draw a few more lines to connect the last remaining points to really give it that nice complex geometric look. So I'll make sure that no layers are selected and I'll grab my pen tool and I'll go ahead and start drawing the kind of lines I'm looking for. So that'll connect those, but I don't want the fill. So I'll go into my shape layer that I've just created and I'll just go ahead and pull this path out of that shape and the stroke out and then I'll just get rid of that group that it made called shape one. And so that just leaves me with my path and the stroke. So then I'll select my path and I'll duplicate it. I'll twirl it down and highlight the path itself. And then I can just move it over here and double click to get the transform properties. And I can just sort of rotate it into place. And in the end, we're going to parent these points anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll repeat that process. So I have four that all sort of line up with where they're meant to be. So again, it's not perfect right now, but we're going to be parenting these points to the points on the original polygons. So it's not really important that they all match up right now. I'll go ahead and rename the shape layer extra, and then I'll highlight all these paths so that I can use the points follow nulls button again. So now I've got nulls for all these extra points that I've just drawn. And so it's just going to be the same process of parenting them to the ones that they kind of match up to. So I'll go ahead and select all of them and I'll color code these as well. And then I'll drag them down here to get me a little bit closer to the stuff I'm going to be parenting them to. So this first point here is going to be attached to the second point of the largest polygon. So I'll do that shift parent trick again. And now if I move that point, you'll see that my line goes with it. And so again, I'm just going to be repeating this process for all of the points that I just made. All right, so I got all those things parented now, and that really concludes the end of the actual rigging of all this stuff. So all I'm gonna do now is reorganize some of this so that I have all my shape layers easily accessible. So I'll bring those up towards the top. Now I'm gonna pull up the scale of control one, and I'll set a keyframe at frame zero for zero percent. Then I'm going to zoom into my timeline and at frame 12, I'm going to make that 115%. I'll go five more frames forward to 17 and I'll make that 98% and five more frames and I'll make that 100. I'll highlight these last three keyframes and right click and go to keyframe assistant, easy ease. And for this second keyframe, I'll right click again and go to keyframe velocity and set that incoming velocity influence to 80%. Then I'll move down my timeline to about two seconds and I'll set another keyframe for 100%. I'll move five frames forward again and I'll set this to 115. And then I'll go about 20 frames and I'll set this to negative 115. I'll go five more frames forward to make that negative 98 and five more frames and set that to negative 100. Again, I'll just make sure these are standard easy ease. 
Then I'll right click on this second keyframe and go to keyframe velocity, set the incoming influence to 50% and the outgoing to 60. And for this third keyframe over here, I'm going to go to keyframe velocity and set that incoming influence to 80%. Now, all these extra keyframes are just to animate a little bit of overshoot and then a little bit of bounce just to give this animation a bit more life. So I'll highlight all my keyframes by clicking on the word scale and I'll hit command C to copy and then I'll bring my playhead over to frame zero and highlight the control to null and then I'll paste with command V. So that'll paste all the keyframes that I just made on the scale onto this second control. Then what I'm going to do is offset this layer by about three frames just to give us some lag in that animation. For the second set of keyframes, I'm actually going to move these in front of control ones. So maybe just by a frame or two. And I'll bring my work area in so that I can preview this. So this is looking really good. Now I'm just going to make this interior shape into a mat for footage. So to do that, I just need to figure out which one that is. It's poly2 and I'll duplicate that shape and I'll change the name to poly2 mat. And then I'll go up to the add menu and add a fill so that there's something that the layer below it can use as a mat. Then I'll go over to my project panel and I've got a few images in here that I can use. So I'll bring those, one of those in and I'll scale it down. And then I'll set its track mat to alpha mat so that it's looking at that polygon mat. And you'll see right there, now it's matted to that shape. That's looking really good, but I'm noticing now that if I go through my timeline here, you'll see that the lines start to overlap over the footage and that just doesn't really look that good. What's happening is that the interior shape is opening up first instead of the outer shape. And that's because we set these keyframes to start before the outer one, which is what we want for closing, but it's not what we want for opening back up. So you can see in the beginning here that the outer shape opens first and then the inner shape. So to do that, we're just going to have to do a little bit of keyframing in here. I'll go through my timeline and look at my values of scale over here. And I'll look and see that it goes from 19 to negative 18 on the very next frame. So I'll set a keyframe here for the value that it's already at 19. And I'll make sure it's linear by command clicking it. Then I'll scrub through my playhead and I'll set a keyframe for zero here. And I'll make sure that they're both linear again. And I'm looking at my values for control one as well. So I want to make sure that these values are higher numbers, even though they're negative. So it would actually be a lower number than the ones for control two so that it's bigger then control two. And so by doing that, I can get it to close first, but then open second. Yeah, and that's looking good. Now I wanna use this closing as a transition to another piece of footage. So with my scale at zero right here, what I can do is I can split this matte layer by going to edit split layer or command shift D. And so then I can just bring in my other piece of footage and I can set that to alpha mat. So when it opens back up, it's using that other piece of footage and I just need to scale that probably. So now when I ran preview, I've got a nice little transition between the two. Another cool thing I can do is add rotation to all of this. So to do that, I can just go to layer, new, null object, and I'll make sure it's up at the top of the layer stack by my control nulls. And I'll change its name to rotate. And then I'll parent my control one and control two to that rotate layer. Then I'll pull up its rotation with R on the keyboard and I'll option click on the stopwatch to pull up the expression menu. And then I just need to type in time times 30. And so what that'll do is it'll rotate the null 
30 degrees every second. And since the control one and control two are parented to the rotate null, they'll be rotating as well. And so that's just adding some more movement to our animation so that there's never really any static points. The last thing I'll do is add some different widths to my strokes on these shapes just to add some variance. So for poly two, that's the innermost one, I'll set that to 15. And poly three, I'll make 10. And the extras, I'll make those eight. And yeah, so that just adds a little bit of depth. It makes the thicker lines look like they're closer up and the thinner ones look like they're a little bit further away. Well, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you did and you'd like to see more tutorials, please go ahead and subscribe because we're making new ones all the time. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.